welcome back. Let's hop right into my account so we can see our dashboard. You can see here that the dashboard has been connected to both the New York City and Miami facilities request boards. Now, let's take a closer look at this dashboard to see how we built it out to show the metrics we outlined in the previous chapter. We will go back to our boards to see any structural considerations we made or specific features we had to add in order to create our report. So working from top to bottom, the first metric we wanted to showcase was how many requests each office has in any given stage of the request process. We chose to display this using a chart widget and pick the stack bar chart to see the breakdown per office and how many requests are in each stage. Going back into one of our boards, for this metric, because we needed to be able to count the requests per stage, we structured our board so that each group of the board represents a different stage of the process and the items are representing a request. Looking at the settings of this widget, we chose a stacked bar chart with the x-axis pulling in from the board, the stack by option as the different group or phases, we also chose to expand the stack mode so that we can see the items in a side-by-side -side comparison. However, you could choose to just leave it as stacked mode. And then our y-axis is counting the items for each phase or group. The next metric we're measuring is how many requests each office is receiving on a quarterly basis. On the dashboard, we were able to showcase this metric by using another chart widget, specifically another stacked bar chart, and expanded the stack mode so we can see the number of requests per office in a side-by-side -side comparison as well. So we'll get into the specifics of this in a second, but going back into our board, we chose to use the creation log column to automatically log the date when a request is submitted to track which quarter the request was made. Looking into the specific settings, we again chose the stacked bar chart and our x-axis is pulling in the creation log column and because we wanted to see it by quarter, we chose to group it by quarter. However, you could choose day, weeks, months, or years. Our stack by is by the different board. Now, the reason we expanded the stack mode for this particular widget is because right now we only have requests for one quarter. As we get more requests for different quarters, we can collapse the stack mode so that we can see them in a side-by-side -side comparison per quarter, such as this. But for now, this works well. And then our y-axis is counting the items again. The next metric we're tracking is the total duration per office of handling requests on a monthly basis. To show this, we set up the time tracking widget that is pulling the total time tracked for each office. On the board, we added a time tracking column and set up an automation so that when a new item or request is created, it will automatically start the time tracking column for us. Now, the reason we added this automation is because we want to see how long the request takes to complete from the time it was created up until the time it was marked as done. Now, going back into our dashboard and taking a look at the settings. The time tracking columns or the time tracking settings are pulling in the time tracking column. The column type is by the boards. And under more settings, we are choosing to see it at a monthly level. You can also adjust it to see it on a daily basis, a weekly basis, or a yearly basis. And you could add hours for a threshold if you wanted to. Since we're not sure how many requests we take, we don't really want to put a timestamp for how many hours there could be within the total time tracked.
The last metric on our dashboard is to show whether each office is meeting its SLA goals for the different priority types of requests. This is a good example of where you might need to adjust your board to track specific data in order to track a given metric. To showcase this, we knew we would want to use another chart widget. And on our board, we used a combination of a status column to show the priority of each request, which is high, medium, and low. And each priority has a different SLA that has to be met, meaning the team needs to complete the request in different timeframes. So in order to show this, we included a formula column that pulls the data from the time tracking column and the priority column to show how many hours within or over SLA we are for each different priority level of the different requests. Now, we're not gonna go into specifics of formulas during this webinar, but you can learn more about the formula column and how to build out complex formulas such as this from our formula webinar series in the Monday Academy. You could also use the question mark in the bottom left corner and go to our community to learn about formulas or contact us so that our formula support team can help you with specific questions regarding the formula you've already built out. We also added conditional coloring for the formula column to highlight the requests that were over SLA. Now, this is not specifically needed for our report, but it helps us see where we can improve as a team in our workflow. To add conditional coloring, you click on the three dots, click on the paint can, and here's where you can change the parameters for your conditions. So we chose to keep it as a cell rather than highlighting an entire row. We chose our formula column, and if it contains the negative symbol, then it will be highlighted. Going back into our dashboard, we chose to use the line graph chart so we can see where each priority falls within their SLAs. So we set up the settings so that we chose the line graph chart the x-axis is pulling in from the status column, and because there's multiple on the boards, we chose we made sure to choose the priority column. And the y-axis is pulling in the SLA hours formula column. Now, this chart is also specific just to New York. So in order to make it so that it's only pulling data from New York's board, even though there are two boards connected to this dashboard, for this specific widget, we were able to remove the Miami board from within the board settings of the chart widget. This is great if you want to show individualized data such as one board to another without having the other board's data impact the widget. For Miami, all we simply did was duplicate the widget, but removed the New York board within the settings. So now we can see New York is not meeting their high priority or medium priority SLA goals, but they are meeting their low priority SLA goals. And we can see that Miami is not meeting their high priority goals, but they are meeting their medium and low priority SLA goals. Now, join me in the next section to see how we pull in our third board for our new office. <laughs>